um, I finished watching Berlizzi play The Walking Dead. And man, so let me tell you, only two games have ever made me cry. The first game was The Last of Us at the beginning. Um, if you know, you know. Uh, the second game was The Last of Us Part Two <laughs> at the end. Again, if you know, you know. Um, the third game <laughs> was another zombie game. <laughs> and it was The Walking Dead, the final season around the very end. I didn't expect it because I knew what was going to happen. I had watched somebody play it before. But it hit me this time far harder. Probably it was it was a lot because of Berlizzi was getting emotional and then I started getting emotional. I was like, man, this is great. <laughs> the, um, and also the gameplay of the final season of The Walking Dead makes me so sad that Telltale's gone because it was so good. They made it more engaging. Um, one of the biggest criticisms of these types of games are the, um, what are they called? What is, uh, I, well, I don't know why I'm forgetting. The sequences where you have to like press a button that happens in like God of War and like Uncharted and a whole bunch of other games. I forget what they're called. Um, I really can't remember what they're called. Do you know what I'm talking about? Repeat that last bit. Like the, the action sequences where you have to like, press a button in games like quick time events quick time events there we go i couldn't remember the name of them a big criticism of these types of games are that quick time events suck i don't necessarily agree with that i think that it depends on how you use them but sometimes they can be stupid <laughs> um and for some people they take away from like um um player choice games like the last of us i mean I, why did i say the last of us the walking dead um <laughs> or like you know telltale's batman or wolf among us and things like that and this one instead, it takes a more action game approach. It takes a more action game approach that I think could have been the future of the Batman games. Because what happens is there'll be a moment where a bunch of zombies are coming towards you and you're controlling the character in third person, they have a knife and you go, you either stab the zombie and hit or you hit them in the knee and they fall and then you stab them and hit. And I was thinking, what if you, what if you had a combination of Arkham combat combat with the story of a Toto, Telltale Walking Dead. So you still make decisions, but whenever you get to a section where you have to fight or do stealth, it's like an Arkham game. I feel like that's the direction that Telltale is going. And that would have been really cool to see. I know you love those Batman games. <laughs> I do. You, you just reminded me, I had just seen, I don't remember when, it was before, it was in between last podcast and this podcast, but it was, um. Berlizzi playing uh playing Batman season one and it was when uh it was the episode where he fights Lady Arkham in uh the train station and Catwoman is there and he does the little uh like he puts the thing on the wall and he goes up and then like he jumps down like his cape spreads out so it looks like a bat and Berlin is just screaming his lungs off oh my god you like you just reminded me of that I was like yo that was he hyped that scene up so much for me and I was yeah. every time I see that scene like I can't stop it's not the same without hearing him scream yeah I've been watching him play um Batman as well um, I'm still in the first episode but he doesn't finish the playthrough I'm gonna just let you know now he doesn't finish the playthrough don't get your hopes up because his playthrough was so good and he just never finishes it yeah he does that with a lot of players but <laughs> um what else 